Welcome back to Reality Asserts Itself. I'm Paul Jay on The Real News Network, and we are back with Lester Ernest, one of the creators of artificial intelligence or machine language, as he would prefer to call it. Thanks again for joining us. My pleasure. So up until now, you were working at MIT. Uh, you were you good, then creating this great big fraud of a anti uh, a, a missile defense system or a defense system that's supposed to track with radar bombers that are coming in, Russian bombers that are supposed to attack, except the whole system's a crock because it can't work. Right. Um, that goes on for a long time. When, when do you live MITRE and what comes next? Well, uh, I went into my MITRE in 1958 along with my other colleagues. We were temporarily without housing. <laughs> I ended up at an abandoned uh, missile site, <laughs> became my office. Um, and uh, But eventually they built new buildings for this corporation. and uh, Which you just said was not a very profitable non-profit. <laughs> correct. Well, who, who, who shared the booty of the, of the profit of the non-profit? Well, Everyone working there, I guess. Uh, the management. Uh, <laughs> And uh, there was probably uh, some bribery going on, although I have no direct knowledge of that. Um, because they were, in effect, supporting uh, a whole series of fraudulent, uh, what I call military industrial congressional frauds. This is part of a theme of the, the enormous profit out of the hysteria created in the, by the Cold War. Yes. And the way it worked was um, various corporations would bribe politicians. It's legal, it's called campaign contributions. And they would then fund these various projects that the Defense Department would then contract out, giving the crooks a lot of money. Uh, and that's still going strong today, uh, 60 years later. So this anti, this defense system goes on for 25 years, moves from MIT to MITRE. You continue working on this system, but also you say there's some other stuff that goes on, which yeah. is a similar fraud. Well, uh, after I stepped aside from SAGE Air Defense, uh, oh, uh, uh, well, then I went to um, System 438L, which is the Air Force uh, intelligence system that was supposed to computerize everything. The goal was not to improve anything, it was to computerize it. Those are not necessarily compatible. And the colonel who was in charge had a sole source contract with uh, IBM. And the people he was working with happened to be pretty incompetent but they nevertheless built a multi-million dollar system for SAC headquarters, that is the Strategic Air Command uh, headquarters located near y Omaha. And this was supposed to replace the old military intelligence system. The, the, the military has a whole bunch of um, Communi encrypted communication lines transmitting textual material that it originally just printed out on paper. And then the paper would be given to the intelligence crew who were on duty. They would use grease pencils to summarize the intelligence situation worldwide, and they would keep the paper in their filing cabinet. So they were pretty much up to date within a few minutes of everything that was coming in over the, these lines. However, IBM 
computerized it by having each piece of paper put into punch cards manually. Um, and then those cards would be verified by another typist to make sure that every punch was correct. And then they would go through error checking of various sorts. And then they would be put online so that you could search for messages about a certain thing. But this process meant they were always three days out of date. Because it took so long to make these cards. Exactly. So that was a pretty useless system. I, I, just to be clear, Strategic Air Command, amongst other things, is the one that actually is planning a potential nuclear strike on, on the Soviet Union. And, and this, the whole war plan is going through Strategic Air Command. Exactly. So uh, I was taken aback that this was going on. So I sent some guys there to um, check on the number of inquiries that were coming in from the duty officer at a, uh, in any given time. And the answer was zero because it was a useless system. So then uh, a person higher in command at SAC decreed that every duty officer, there were three per day, uh, each one of them would ask at least two questions. So we later checked the logs and the number of questions asked was exactly two times the number of duty officers because the information was pointless. Absolutely But pointless. they get to prove to Congress who's funding all this thing that something's happening. Yeah. So it's another crock. Another crock. Well, I figured out that there was a way to make an actually useful system by having the text coming in over the line go directly into a computer, which would store the message and index it by keywords so that you could then do a search by keywords and you could start doing that the moment after the message arrived. Uh, and you would get all the messages, recent messages on that, that match those keywords. Uh, this is, this is words, the beginning of the first real search engine. It was, it was the first search engine. And <clears throat> I got uh, some guys at the MITRE Corporation to actually build it. I was planning to oversee it, but they decided that I knew so much <laughs> that they sent me off, then sent me off to CIA headquarters for another project. CIA had two large databases that they had been collecting for years. That what, were what, what year are we in now? Uh, that was in 1963. Three. Just before you go to the CIA, let me just ask you a question. You, you write that the whole idea of Kennedy sending uh, men to the moon was another just for show. There was no reason for it. Yeah. Well, um, the original plan that uh, NASA and others had was to send robots to the moon. And we could have done that for a tiny fraction of the cost of sending people there and getting them back. And the robots could have collected a lot more information than those humans ever did. Uh, uh, so that was the original plan. And um, then the question arose, uh, could humans on Earth drive a robot on the moon in real time? And so one of the uh, uh, Caltech people uh, came to Stanford as a graduate student and made that project uh, his thesis, a PhD thesis. And what what they did was put together a system with a four-wheeled vehicle rolling around on Earth with a uh, 
two second was it? I forget the exact uh, delay time, round trip communication time to the moon, something like two and a half seconds. Uh, and so then the question is, could a person looking at a video that is half that old and now give a command, stirring command, make it go the right place and not crash? And he proved the answer was no. <laughs> you would lose control quickly um, because uh, when you twist, nothing happens on the screen until a little while later. And then you see you're going too far and you go back the other way. So you're doing this. Anyway, he, he proved that there was a problem. But then another graduate student came along using the same vehicle and uh, showed that if you had a, a little analog computer that kept track of the stirring commands and predicted where the vehicle will be when a current twist has an effect, shows it as a bright dot on the screen looking ahead, then, then you steer that bright dot. The point here is this could have been done without sending people to the moon. That would have worked, and it would have been much, much cheaper. But the political reality is sending people to there was political theater of the first order. And the Russians had already sent Sputnik up, so they had to prove that Yeah, the and the Russians were incidentally planning to send robots also. So instead, we... We sent people who I viewed, uh, you know, astronauts were really actors in a political theater and still are. Uh, they're, they're not doing science. Uh, they're putting on show. And uh, that's the way our government works. In the next segment of our interview, we'll talk about how this big fraud helped create the conditions for the Internet. Please join us for the continuation of Reality Asserts Itself with Lester Ernest on the Real News Network.